Let's get out to Sun Valley now. Julia Borston's there with SoFi CEO Anthony Noto. Julia. Thanks, John. And Anthony, thanks for joining us here in Sun Valley. Uh, I want to start off the conversation. We have so much to talk about, but start off the conversation on that Morgan Stanley note saying that SoFi should be valued as a bank, not as a tech company or a fintech. What's your response to that analyst downgrade? <laughs> My response would be um, we're a diversified financial company that delivers our value proposition via technology. And so analysts can value us any way that they would like if they want to value us like a technology company or as a bank. If you look at us as, as a bank, we're a bank that's structuring our business over the long term at steady state to have a 30% ROE. Banks that have a 30% ROE trade at four to five times tangible book. We're trading below that today. So uh, that's my point of view if you want to value us as banks. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to talk a little bit about some of the news from this this week about inflation. We had the consumer price index and PPI today um, lower than expected, showing slowing inflation. What does that mean for your business at SoFi? A strong economy is great for our business. We've had a strong economy. It's allowed us to really operate in different environments over the last two years. Um, we haven't had the student loan business be as robust as it can be in 2024. But over the last two years, we've had eight record quarters in a row of record revenue um, with rates going up. I think is in a period of stability where rates are flat, um, we can operate incredibly well, and we've done really well while they're going up. So. I want to talk a little bit about the student loan business. Of course, so if I started out um, in the student loan business, and there have been a couple of big news items that have been very relevant to that. Most recently, the Supreme Court um, ruling um, that was that was rejecting student loan forgiveness. Also, the news around the debt ceiling. What does that mean for your business going forward? The most important thing for our country is there's clarity. Now, now people can decide what they want to do. They have to resume their federal student loan payments. We give them a great option to lower their cost of that payment by refinancing with us if they can get a lower rate or lowering the payment by extending it out over time, which in this environment where they haven't paid that student loan for three years, they may have other costs that don't allow them to make that payment again so they could spread it out over a longer time and lower the monthly payment. Um, that will be a contributor to our business. It's been a real negative the last three years. But as I mentioned, I couldn't be proud of our team and hitting eight quarters of record revenue in a row. Um, but the fact that there's clarity is most important. I do think the administration has to find ways to give relief for those people that need it. Um, and we're in the right economy to do that now, where before we had to give relief to everybody. John Ford has some questions here. John? Yeah, thanks, Julia. Anthony, uh, you just gave us uh, the case if the street wants to value you like a bank. Give me your point of view if investors are going to treat you like a, a technology company, focusing maybe on, on your margins, AI, how you're going to grow users, and uh, your ability to expand into new markets. So, John, our business doesn't exist without technology. We have no buildings. We have no branches. It's our, you, you access our product via the mobile phone or your PC. So we're absolutely a technology company. We have our own technology platform, which is also part of our business that contributes 20-plus you know, percent of our revenue. And we're using our technology to power other fintechs and B2B companies. Um, our growth has been over 40 percent in the Q1. We had really strong member growth. As I mentioned, record revenue and record EBITDA. We're seeing great trends in our business on the back of our strategy to be a one-stop shop for all your financial needs. We're the only company that provides for you on one digital platform all the financial needs, or products that you need as a consumer, and we do with a superior value proposition. And that's allowing us to gain huge market share. We've added over $2 billion of deposits every quarter since we got our bank license, and we continue to see that trend very positively.